and away we go. Okay. So, uh, Gahin, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how this uh, fantastic uh, product or this fantastic uh, tool came into oh. existence? Go ahead. So, I'm going to explain how the project began. So, Jean Simon Garner and Toby Bidar are two RISI consultants. And they made um, last year the La Rétroaction Technologique to give feedback in the three LM LMS. So learning management system about Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom and Moodle. So this year Mark just translate and adapt it for the English sector. And I work with all of them to adapt for at risk students because I'm an orthopedagogy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I screwed up. So here we go. This is all about tech. So here, here we go. I'm going to share my screen again and put share sound because we're going to go and have a look. You, you'll see that basically, if we click here, right, this is the French side. Okay. Of the, um, of the tool and the English side is exactly the same. And I'm gonna show you all about that. But right now, um, sorry about that. I have to back up the bus. So just bear with me for a second. Here. Uh, oh, here all right. So, um, what I'd like to uh, talk about now, or Karen is gonna talk to you a little bit about is uh, you know, why it's so useful for students to have digital feedback. So, so this is what we've done and, and we're going completely off script. So that's fun. Uh, we're using, we're using PowerPoint. So go ahead, Karen, you can, you can share yeah. the screen. So uh, what that allows Karen to do is to speak in French. There are subtitles that come up automatically in English and you have a little bit of a visual uh, aid for you. And so there we go. Take it away, Karen. So all people see my, my, my screen? Yeah, sure. So for that part, I'm gonna explain you in, in French because as you can see, my English is not so good. Well, well I do, I'm doing my best. Alors, je vais vous parler de la rétroaction en fait euh, rétroactive pour les étudiants. Alors la recherche en fait a vraiment montré que ça avait un impact positif chez l'ensemble des étudiants mais euh, particulièrement chez les élèves les plus à risque. Donc, donner de la rétroaction aux élèves, c'est donner en fait une relation pédagogique, une relation éducative, puisqu'elle ne fait pas juste parler des notes et de comment ça se passe et si l'élève progresse, mais elle va aussi aller travailler toutes les stratégies d'organisation, de planification, les stratégies cognitives et métacognitives des élèves. Alors, il faut se comprendre que la, rétro la rétroaction technologique, en fait, c'est bon pour les élèves, mais ça doit aussi concerner les enseignants. Alors, ça sert, ça sert à l'élève à voir s'il est sur la bonne voie pour progresser. Et ça sert aussi à l'enseignant à adapter ses pratiques et à varier ses stratégies d'apprentissage. Et pourquoi utiliser la rétroaction technologique? C'est parce que ça donne un accès rapide et en tout temps à l'ensemble des élèves. Alors, on sait que nos élèves adultes, ils continuent d'apprendre à l'école et à la maison. Donc, avoir accès aux commentaires des enseignants lorsqu'ils sont dans, au, au travail, dans le transport, à la maison, c'est un bon moyen de garder un contact avec eux. Donc, ça peut avoir un impact aussi sur la relation maître-élève et sur euh, l'engagement qu'on a en, envers ces étudiants. That's, uh, that's really well said, uh, Karen. So, so basically, um yeah the yeah now that you stop sharing your screen so i can't read can you put your screen back please second sorry can you put your screen back please yeah sure thank you so basically yeah what what she was saying is that of course uh digital feedback has a strong impact on student engagement it's, you can get to it quite easily uh, it has a positive impact on teacher-student relationships because you can go back and forth. There's a certain amount of permanence to the to the feedback because once it's in the LMS, once it's on the the uh, uh, the work, then it can be it can be you know gone back. You can go back and look at it often, and uh, you know you can make it personalized. Also, have easy access to it so students can get it really. 
pretty much at any time. Thank you, Kahin. Now I'll stop sharing my screen. Well, thank you so much. So now we're going to start on our little tour here. So Kahin, um, where would you like to start? Let me get to our, 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 our bus stop here. So we've got the three uh, main LMSs in, in Quebec, in classroom, pretty much the world, classroom teams and Moodle. Where would you like to start? Well, I think team is the most popular L LMS. So let's go there. The other two sections are exactly made the same. However, the video are made for each one. Mark will show you later. Okay, let's go, Mark. Okay, but before we go, we have to, oh, I did it again. We have to play the disclaimer. It's, it's, it's company policy, sorry about that. It, it won't be very long. Uh, so just let me, yeah, we just have a little disclaimer. Welcome to the Digital Feedback Express Bus. And thank you for choosing us as your means of transportation along the digital feedback highways and byways. Please fasten your seatbelt and keep your coffee or teacup far away from your keyboard to avoid unwanted electrical shorting or explosion. The digital feedback bus line is not responsible. Okay, Kat, hey, buddy. Hey, I thought some guy in the way. I don't know. There's some, move your truck. Guy's got to move his truck. I got something to do. All right, so here we go. So we're off on our little. Uh, okay, so here we go. Sorry about that. There was a truck in the way. It was a bit shaky, eh, yeah, Kahin? Yeah, that was a bumpy ride. I, I know, Montreal potholes. What can I do, man? <laughs> They're even here in De Montagne, all over the place. Anyway, um, so we're at the home page. And uh, go ahead, to tell us what this is all about here, Kahin. But here the team's homepage, each square has a video to explain type of feedback. The first one is one of the theory. Okay, exactly. So if we look here, these are all, uh, like we were saying before, they're all the same for each LMS, um, the, the format, if you'd like. And this, this, of course, is the same for each one. So if we click here, you'll see that, that Hattie reminds us, John Hattie, that uh, feedback is one of the most powerful influences on learning and achievement. Uh, and, and I like the way he puts it. So it's, it's the question of how the student is doing and how the student can, can do better. So that's what can, feedback can bring, sort of those elements of improvement and not so much assessment. So we have to look at, in, from, that, um, uh, from that perspective. Uh, Karin is gonna let us know a little bit about why feedback, and this is very important for the AG community and mm -hmm. also for the VT community, why uh, feedback is so important for at-risk students. So you can go ahead, Karin. Yeah, for that part, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share I can my talks. screen. So thumbs up if you see my screen. Great, thank you. So, well, as I said, there's a different form of feedback, but it's so good for the... Uh, je vais parler en français, je peux parler en français, ça va être plus facile. Je vais vous donner plus d'exemples. Alors, les, euh, les feedbacks, en fait, technologiques, euh, utiliser la rétroaction technologique, c'est super bien pour nos élèves, puisqu'on sait que certains de nos élèves euh, ont accès avec un langage qui est verbal, donc on utilise la parole, mais on a aussi accès à notre langage non-verbal. Donc, on peut avoir accès à l'intonation, euh, des fois en, en voyant nos expressions faciales, Donc, ça, c'est très, très bien parce qu'on a accès à l'ensemble des mécanismes de communication. Aussi, les, les outils technologiques nous permettent immensément d'outils de, 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 d'accessibilité. Donc, par exemple, je suis en train de vous parler en français. Vous voyez l'information en anglais. Et même si je parle en français, vous pouvez en fait lire euh, l'information en anglais. Et c'est la même chose. Si vous parlez en anglais et si on voit, par exemple, les choses en anglais, d'avoir ce qui est écrit, d'avoir un verbatim de ce qui est écrit, mais ça peut aider aussi à supporter l'apprentissage et la rétroaction va être encore plus efficace. 
Donc, il y a, des, euh, il y a beaucoup d'outils d'accessibilité, des outils de traduction, des text-to-speech. Euh, on peut utiliser beaucoup les images. Alors, on sait que nos faibles lecteurs euh, ont peu de mots pour s'exprimer et peu de mots pour comprendre. Donc, l'utilisation d'images combinées avec les outils de technologiques, mais c'est une belle façon d'augmenter le pouvoir de la rétroaction. Et euh, l'utilisation de, 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 voyons, l'utilisation de la rétroaction technologique permet aux élèves à risque d'être plus engagés parce qu'il permet une rétroaction qui est plus euh, dynamique et qui peut faire des allers et retours. Donc, je donne un bout de rétroaction à mon élève, mon élève me répond, je lui donne un bout. Donc, ça peut être une forme de communication et ça, qu'il soit en classe, à la maison, dans ses transports, dans ses autres sphères de vie. Super. So what, uh, what we're talking about here specifically is, is really about, you know, maybe audio or video feedback where, where students not only get the feedback itself, but the context in which it's, it's, it's being given. So there are nonverbal cues letting the student get a little more information uh, for students who are, are at high risk. We can also look at uh, using, um, you know, uh, assistive technology, uh, text to speech translation, etc to help students along with, with their feedback and with the work that they need to do. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we follow the pr principles of metacognition. So we're going to another level. It's not just an understanding. There really is something connected to it uh, and executive functions while you're using digital tools. So that's great. So let me share my screen again. We're going back and forth, eh? I tell you. Mm -hmm. But we'll get there. All right. So. Uh, let me just move on here. I can do it. Emma, why won't you move? Do you don't want to be my friend anymore? I didn't want to be my friend. Hello? Hmm. Is there any question before we continue? Yeah. Are there any questions so far? This yeah, is... Robin. Go ahead, Robin. Sorry, looking for the unmute button. Um, it's uh, not a, a comment that you might address coming up, but uh, you know, like you were saying, like the use of, uh, of, of tech tools, and we all know, like it's all about user accessibility and all that kind of stuff. But there's also that element that like students need to be taught, need to be made aware, they need to realize like those tools are also in their hands. So I'm curious, are you gonna address at some point the, the that learning curve and how you help a student sort of not get lost in, I need to find out how to use all these tech tools. So it supports me in my learning feedback and I kind of lose track of what I'm actually supposed to be doing, which is whatever the content is. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, an interesting question. Um, yes, we can certainly talk about that as we go along. Um, you'll see actually in the next slide where we're talking about different forms of feedback. And if we're, if we're looking right at the tech, Uh, obviously, there is a learning curve, as you say. So you can't just decide the next day. Is everyone seeing the three types of feedback or did I? Okay, good. I thought I had the other screen going. Um, so there is a learning curve for the students and for the teachers, of course. So you choose the feedback that works best. And we'll see that a little later, as you say, that works best for you and for your students, right? And that, that is going to enhance as much you can, as it can uh, what you're doing. So when we get to a little further, you'll see we have little um, question marks on the, on, the, uh, on the page. And those are explanations of why you would use this type of feedback for what purpose, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, there, definitely it's not, a, it's not as simple as, well, now we'll just use this. You have, there has to be a, a form of learning to be done for the teacher and the student. Uh, but the idea is to kind of work together and uh, you know, and to take it very slowly and let things go along as they may. Is that good for now? All right. So as you can see here, there are three types of feedback. So if we look at, uh, at what's here, we have basic feedback, meaning just a very much you know, right or wrong. Then you've got instructional feedback. So you, you give suggestions how to improve and then there's real coaching feedback. So pushing, pushing the student towards what you would like uh, them to do. And, Different types of feedback uh, will be good for different types of learners. So for mm -hmm. 
you know, basic feedback, we're looking more at advanced or, or intermediate learners and coaching feedback, which would be the most involved kind of feedback would be more for novice learners. You can go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, but you must know that feedback is not just about right and wrong. Here we see far potential of dimension of feedback. I, I think it's next step, um, Mark. Yeah, we'll move forward. If I can find my, my cursor, there it is. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, feedback can even help uh, with relation, relationship, oh, sorry. <laughs> Building through the affective dimensions. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Kevin, uh, how am I doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're a very good house mouse clicking. Yeah, I, I feel so too. You see now, so you've got uh, effective feedback here. I'm feeling much better about myself. Yeah, now Mark, move to the next one. Thank you. You got it. So let's stop over here. How we see that digital feedback has better quality and more detail than written feedback? Yeah, definitely. We can see that. Um, you know, with written feedback that sometimes you just, you need to do it and that's just fine. However, with digital feedback, there's the idea, you know, of it lasting for a very long time. It has a very positive impact on students, very accessible. So all these, there's a lot more to it than just writing on, on some paper. Okay, and we'll just stop at the, the next one here, um, which is, I, you know, from the French translation to the English translation, I really changed things up. I did translate the effective feedback should, but here you'll notice um, some teachers from our uh, network. Uh, Tracy Rosen did a couple of uh, um, uh, videos on formative assessment. Now assessment is not feedback, but there are some principles that you can see through these videos about how it's not about, as Kathleen was saying, right or wrong. No. Uh, but it's more about helping the student move forward and offering some sort of you know, guidance so that they can move to the next step. Um, so I guess this is pretty much the first part of the, of the uh, you know, yeah. four. So um, what, should we move on to the next part or? Uh, but of course, uh, but wait, okay. is that Abby back there? I think I saw Abby, Abby, are you there? There's Abby. Why don't you come up and see us here? Hello, everybody. Enjoying the bus tour so far? <laughs> We're trying our best. We're having fun. Um, good drive. So, so uh, both Karin and Abby work, of course, at Karin being a Pukadagar. I never know what the English translation is. And Abby's dossier this year is accessibility and assistive technology. I thought it'd be nice to have both of them here to answer any of your questions so far. Anything about feedback or helping at-risk students or things like that. Could be questions or reflections, either one of the two. Reflections too, sure. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on uh, to the next stop here. Uh, and that's going to be, um, well, let me just show you this to start. So up here on the right, you have, oops, you can't see because I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. So right here you have um, this little thing here, which will bring you back right to the start. And then you can decide if Teams is not your thing, you can go and uh, look at the same things for uh, Google Classroom or Moodle. Uh, they're all in the same place. Um, and there are infographics to explain some of the do's and don'ts of each each one one of the types of feedback. So if I click here on a written text here, yeah, have a look. Go ahead, get in. You can tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you're right. Well, in the written uh, in the written text, there you go. In the question mark, you find some tips. Why? Why to do one? Why and why? Not simple why and why. See how and why. How and why. <laughs> Are we going to give effective feedback? So why so good for, for actress students? Yeah. So um, one thing that, uh, that is mentioned here, and you'll see it on the, on the left side, is it's, it's written, give a purpose for reading by writing a general comment at the top of the document. 
And as Karen and I were going back and forth and, and creating this workshop, yeah. it kind of caused me to pause because I was a, an English teacher back way back when, an ESL teacher. Mm-hmm. And that was never really a, something that I did. I would correct, you know, I would sit down and okay, this is good, this isn't good. And I, I would make comments to the students, but I, I would like Karen to explain her thoughts behind giving a purpose for reading or an intention for reading. Uh, when you start uh, on a written text. So I will stop my screen again. Sure. So when, when you're teaching, you have an intention, a pedagogical intention. That's good, huh? That's great. So when you, you are to give, when you give feedback, you have to, you have to have some intention feedback. And I'm gonna explain it in French if you want. <laughs> Alors, c'est super important d'avoir des intentions euh, pédagogiques, des intentions de rétroaction. Pourquoi? Parce que pour mon élève qui est plus vulnérable ou pour mon élève qui est à risque, lui, recevoir des commentaires, il ne sait pas quoi faire avec ça. Donc, c'est très, très important de donner un, un, une orientation à sa lecture ou aux commentaires audio ou vidéo que je vais lui donner. Donc, et souvent, c'est quelque chose qui est, et qui est oublié des enseignants. Et lorsqu'on a un élève qui est en très grande difficulté, bien, c'est important, en fait, de, d'avoir un seul objet à donner une rétroaction dessus. Parce que si je lui fais une rétroaction sur sa démarche, sur sa calligraphie, sur son temps, sur son organisation, alors c'est trop de se faire pour lui à travailler en même temps. Alors, on doit y aller un, une fois à la ben, une étape à la fois, une intention en fait à la fois. Et c'est pourquoi les, euh, les outils technologiques sont euh, de très bons outils pour donner de la rétroaction, parce que je vous dis, on, on peut communiquer avec l'élève. Donc, et on peut communiquer par écrit, on peut communiquer par audio, on peut lui envoyer une vidéo. Alors, pendant que l'élève est en train de faire un travail, on peut tout de suite aller l'enligner sur la bonne voie à apprendre. On n'a pas à attendre la fin et qu'il nous remette complètement un travail. Ça va être beaucoup plus efficient et beaucoup plus encourageant pour l'élève de lui donner du, de la rétroaction lorsqu'il est en train de travailler plutôt que lorsqu'il a complètement fini un travail et qu'il nous le redonne. Thank you, uh, Karine. Um, yeah, one thing that we, uh, we like to mention at RECI, uh, in RECI AGI, I should say, is that what we like about, about feedback in an LMS is it's trackable and it's, we can store it so that it's, it's there and it's available for us and for students. So, um, you know, you don't have to necessarily sit next to them. You can be active with them. A collaborative document is also a good way to go. Uh, you have a student writing in a document, you have access to it either, you know, with Google Docs or even Microsoft Word. Um, and your feedback can be in real time while the student is writing. And, you know, you think about the words that you could uh, help them to, to move forward. Um, yeah. So what do you think, Karen? May you have a good point. Instant feedback when you need and it will stay forever. So let's move to another type. Okay, so where where are we going now? Uh, I would like to talk about video feedback. Take it away, Mark. Okay, well, I'm going to get the bus moving again here. Hold on a second. fast. Okay, video feedback. So here we are. Yeah, so there is a bit of learning curve for this one, but it it has a great impact. Yeah, definitely. Like the, yeah. Just like with anything new, and I think you, you touched on it, Robin, you know, how is this going to impact? The, the beauty of this, um, this Genially is that, and we'll see it in a few seconds, is that you, these are easily transferable to students if they're, you know, they're okay with the, um, uh, with the subtitles, but the subtitles are, are pretty well done. I've, I, I curated all of them. They were translated. They're really well-timed. So, You know, if you're looking on a very specific point, you'd like to do video trend, um, retro, uh, video feedback with a student, uh, then these can help the student along uh, to understand how it works and, and all that stuff. That's kind of the nuts and bolts of everything. Um, so 
uh, you know, it, the, the idea behind it is that students can see and hear you in this form of feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good example, if you like, of explicit instruction. So everything is there. You can go very, very far. You can use the student's own document uh, to show where there are elements that you'd like to give feedback to, their nonverbal clues. That's part of your message. And it's, it can be very personal and targeted. Uh, yeah. and perhaps a little more so than in writing. Uh, so there you go. So, uh, and, and the student can hit pause if they need to. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really neat too. So let, let me just take a few seconds. I'm gonna put this on the big screen and this is what it looks like. So one of the videos, and again, there are 18 in all, so six per LMS. And uh, they all pretty much do the same thing here. So I'll put this up big. Everyone can see my Bonjour. Dans cette vidéo, nous a... And of course, this time, but not the time when Karen and I were working, the, the, uh, the subtitles are not working. So if that is the case, and you're looking at this video, you click on the little uh, wheel right here, and you go under sous-titres and Anglais Canada. And away we go. Nous allons parler de... Afin de réaliser une rétroaction vidéo directement dans Teams, il est possible d'utiliser simplement une réunion euh, qu'on va avoir créée avec un élève. Donc, visuellement, ce que vous voyez, c'est euh, la conversation que j'ai avec un élève. Dans ce cas-ci, vous voyez ici qu'il y a une vidéo qui a été euh, enregistrée directement dans notre euh, conversation. Donc, pour ce faire, il faut tout simplement partir une réunion avec l'élève dans ce cas. OK, Toby's very nice, but we don't have to listen to him all day. So as you can see, the, it's quite um, complete. The videos range from anywhere between three and 10 minutes. So depending on how involved uh, all of this is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really, it's quite an interesting uh, way of, of, you know, sort of a little self-directed. If you're thinking about using some form of digital feedback, if you'd like to, you know, help others to do that, or if you would, um, you know, want to bring it into your classroom and have your students look at it too. That's another way of, uh, there's also many tips of, um, of input you can read and it will tell you to be efficient, to be targeted when you give feedback. Yeah. Mark, can yeah. you give the Genially link in the chat? I will definitely give you the Genially. There it is. Into the chat. And I have to, where is it? Oh, in the chat. There we go. So um, I'm going to stop sharing them. Yeah. Uh, so what we would like to invite you to do is to go ahead and click and, and look around and see if there's anything that uh, you have questions about or you know, just take a few minutes and then we'll be back uh, to talk to you to wrap things up. So just go on to that old genially and- uh, I actually up. have a comment about video feedback. Go ahead, Robin. Okay, because it's something that, uh, and I have no idea if in AG it's the same thing as in Bach, but most of the times feedback, no, not most of the times, that's me being uncharitable. It, it often happens that students don't look at it. Students don't listen to it, students don't read it, so whatever. I think part of it has to do with the, the, the culture, of the educational culture, cultural baggage that they're bringing in that they used to feedback being that I passed my that I passed my test or not pass okay I don't need to know the rest right like this idea that feedback is for improvement that's a newer concept so one thing that I tried once it was cool but I tried it once I'm going to be very open about this was using uh, video software um, to insert at specific points in the video uh, mainly it had to do with student process because in Bach we're always dealing with you know real world events so the student could film whatever the steps and the process that they're doing they film it they submit the film and then I can stop it at a certain point and add a question a comment and the student has to interact with that element of the video and it was for the students that actually did it okay and I'll be very honest it was good because it ensured that for me as a teacher, I was verifying that they were getting the feedback, they were understanding it, 
And it set us up for like the next time when we had to put that, when the student had to use those corrective measures or think about it differently, it was really good. And it was a way for me as a teacher to sort of collect that data that I need as not only like I didn't, it's, it's that circle, right? It's that cradle to cradle aspect. It's like, I'm giving you the feedback, but I'm sharing the feedback is effective. I'm ensuring they're absorbing the feedback and that we can put this into action. You know what I mean? So that was another, just a little side note with the, the, the video software. Um, I was using Screencastify and it was awesome. It was super easy, but just a little element. Yeah, I wanted to add. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Judy wants to say something and I know Abby does too. I can, I can. Oh, you can let uh, Abby. Uh... Sure. All right, well, Robin, go, go ahead. I just wanted to piggyback what you're saying. I remember hearing a really great, great quote that in education, kind of treat feedback often as an autopsy. It's after the patient is dead and we kind of have to treat it more as a surgery, right? Um, so formative assessment. But I like what you're saying too about making it more meaningful than just giving that one-way feedback. And something like Flipgrid is great too. We've been using that recently where you can create that question or that feedback and then the student is encouraged to have that two-way conversation. So yeah, I think that touches on what you just said. Like, how do you make it more wretched, like uh, two way, and how do you avoid just always giving it at the end and yeah. changing and, the culture? And before Julie, sorry, Julie, I just jump in. And to start that 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 mindset of feedback is not about pass or fail. Feedback yeah. is not about the teacher acting as God saying you did a good job, you may now pass. And like getting that mindset out of there, especially with adults where it's, it's you know, like I said, we're bringing our educational baggage and so are the teachers. And yeah. those VOC teachers who had a rough go often with education to begin with, and now 30 years later are entering into an education system to be the teacher part, that is a huge hurdle for them to start. Like you fall back, you teach the way you know. And, and yeah. that's massive. So excuse me, Julia, I didn't want to. It's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> not at all. I, I just wanted to say that um, I used to be a French teacher and I used a lot of video feedback to uh, make happen. Uh, St. Mike's Pisset in English is it explicit, explicit, explicit. Uh, teaching. <laughs> And uh, while well, most of my students were using it, but I was doing it like very for little things, very, very quickly. Uh, the first time I tried it, it was to make a correction uh, of a text. And I started by telling the, the student that I would make him come into my head and in order to for him to know exactly what question I was uh, asking out when I was correcting his uh, text. And uh, it took me like 45 minutes and it was before I knew how to chapter uh, recording. And the student said to me like, it was very interesting, but can you like shorten, make it shorter the next time? So uh, what I, I, um, I used to do after that is to just take it like paragraph by paragraph but I also um, make it in a way where I would put the notion I was aborting with the, te the, the students under it. So when he was coming back to me for the same question, I would tell him like, ah, I remember, I think in that text that I already like made a, just go rapidly and, you know, watch it again and then come back to me if you don't understand, because that's possible. You know, you you teaching it like in a certain way. Maybe the students don't understand it at the way you 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 uh, you uh, you made it happen in your uh, in your uh, teaching, in your in explanation. So but just go back. And some of the students were doing it by themselves, you know, going back and maybe like two or three weeks ago, my uh, partner niece asked me to uh, look at one of her texts uh, of Philo and Cegep. She's the, it's driving her crazy philosophy. And uh, I did the same, you know, 
And after that, she was like, oh, wow, that was wonderful. I, I could like hear it again and again and again. Why don't teach her that Cégep don't do the same? It was like, eh. but I understand you pretty well, Robin. It's, it's kind of difficult at first to make students, for, for myself, it was maybe easier because I was in formation at Stiles. So, you know, they, they, I had like 300 students at that time. So it was that or nothing, <laughs> you know, they didn't have the choice. But um, sometimes when we try it like different way, it, at first it's difficult, but then it's very cool. And what I found it cool too, is that, uh, I was able very quickly to see exactly what I should uh, do as a capsule, like video capsule about an ocean in particular. Because if I was explaining exactly the same thing like 10 times in that week and 10 videos, well, then I knew that I should do one like that was for everyone. So that's another way also to take it as a tool. Yeah. yeah, those are very good points, uh, Julie. Uh, feedback, we, we think that feedback is sometimes about the students, but sometimes it's about us and, and our teaching, right? And it's a good way to figure out, oh, how can we, what did I, like you say, what did I miss or what didn't, what wasn't understood the way I thought it was going to be understood? So, you know, taking the time to look through and thinking in terms of what do I give as feedback? Feedback needs to be targeted and it has to be part of a continuum. So you're trying to get the student to advance along. Yes, there are evaluations and assessments that go along, but feedback is about an evolution of maybe more, we're talking more skills, right? Or, or maybe it could be vocabulary depth or you know, depending on what subject that you teach. And so a, a small targeted piece of feedback can go a long way if, if the student, as you say, takes it into account. Um, I used to, uh, and I mean, this is not exactly, well, it's a little, but what I would do is I would do, if we had a written exam in my class, sometimes I would say, okay, now I've corrected everything. Now you have an idea of what needs to be changed. I never actually, you know, um, struck things out and then said, no, it should be this. I, I, I left them hints, you know, look at this, look at your sentence structure, look at the grammar, look at the spelling, et cetera. And then I would have them and give them marks for it. So that's probably not the right motivation, but the idea is it has to be part of a continuum where you, you as, they're, as they're progressing in your course, you can just steer them in the right direction or see that, oh, this might be a problem. And I think it's very important to remember as Karen noted that you don't wanna have feedback on every little thing that is going on in whatever, uh, you know, if it's a text or if it's a, if it's a you know, problem solving or if it's a, you know, an activity, you don't want, you wanna focus on one thing or maybe two and just bring the student to a new realization. Oh, okay, I'm going to go this way now. Um, and one thing that Karen was mentioning too was that um, using your MLS, uh, I'm not even looking to buy a house, looking, using your LMS uh, from the beginning, even if you are in class, is a really good idea because those, those reflexes become reflexes, right? The idea that, oh, okay, I have to go to the Teams channel to get what I need, or I have to go look in the Google Drive to get what I need. So once those are established, then it's much easier to incorporate digital feedback into your teaching. And it's also easier for the students because you know, it becomes a reflex. Are there any more questions or comments? Is there something I can help you with or we can help you with when it comes to this tool? Well, we make a good job. I, I guess we did a good thing, yeah. So, um, well, I'll leave you with that. Um, the, the tool is available, as, as we said to everybody. Uh, I really, um, if you, to, to share it with people would be a great thing. You can always come back to the AC and, uh, and talk to us uh, if you need help or if there's something you wanna look at in particular, uh, and we can help you with that. And of course, you can reach out to Karin. Yeah, sure. So I guess uh, I guess you have a couple of extra minutes to to relax and take it easy. So thank you very much for being here, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>